just as important as adding a part to the board is removing a part. Now, if we have a small part, like a 1206, and we want to unsolder it from the board and replace it with another part, there are really three steps. The first step is we have to remove the part. And once we remove that part, then the pads are going to have some you know, excess solder on them and that may be oxidized. So we need to, in the second step, clean up the pads. Make them look as close to new as we can. And then the third step is we start over again. Now that we've got clean pads, we use exactly the same process that we illustrated previously about putting the part down on those pads. Now to remove the part, that means we have to heat up both pads so it's hot enough to reflow and melt the solder. If it's a small part, like a 1206, then we can probably get away using something to do that. If it's like a, QF, a QFP or a multi-lead part, you can't heat up the leads, all the leads, with the soldering iron well enough, and you have to use a hot air gun. And you blow the hot air over the, the part until all the leads melt, and you lift the part off gently. And we'll illustrate that in another video. So we're going to use the soldering iron to remove the 1206 part. And to do that, it's really about getting both sides and the whole part hot enough. And so I'm going to up the temperature. We usually use around 650, 670 degrees Fahrenheit to uh, uh, do the attach. So to get enough thermal transfer, I'm going to use a pretty hot soldering iron. I'm going to use um, 750. I don't care about damaging the part. I, I do want to be careful to not damage the pads on the board. If I get the pads too hot, then that uh, may lift the pads and make that um, site unusable. So I'm going to get a little solder on the end. That's going to help me in the thermal transfer. I'm going to heat that part with the solder in a good thermal transfer. And then I'm going to heat both sides of that part and it just pops right off. And there, there it is stuck to uh, the end of the soldering iron. And I don't care about that part. However, we do have the pads on the board. And the next step is we want to clean uh, the pads on the board. There's still a pretty good amount of solder on there. The way we're going to clean those is using a little bit of solder wick. And so here is, here is the solder wick. Um, this is a little on the wide side, but it'll be fine for what we're going to do. Ultimately, we're going to uh, place it on top of the pads, run over the soldering iron, and all the excess solder is going to wick into the copper. And the secret to make that work is using solder flux. And so we're going to take our uh, copper, copper and we're going to drip some solder flux on it. Now the tip over here, you can see it's been used, and so I'm just going to snip off some of that tip. So now we have clean copper, and I'm literally just sucking up the um, solder flux, uh, and it's just wicking into uh, the, the, the uh, copper uh, uh, wire. And so I'm going to place it on the surface. I'm going to come around with a hot soldering iron. And in this case, I'm using the same 750 because I have a lot of heat to get in here. I am reflowing that solder and allowing it to melt into the solder wick. And then I want to, as it's reflowed and sucking up, I want to gently lift it but not pull the pads with it. So I'm heating up that solder wick to keep the solder wet and there we go and you can see on the bottom of the solder wick there is some of the solder attached to it and so there may be a little bit of solder left on the pads which is perfectly fine in fact there you can see it kind of reflowing there perfectly fine hey we've got a site all ready to attach a new part it's all ready to attach a new part Hey, let's go ahead and do that. So again, we add a little bit of solder flux. This is my new part. I've already got some solder on the pad to act as a little place to tack. And there we are. We've tacked that part onto the board. At this point, um, we don't want to get the pad too hot uh, for the faint possibility that um, uh, it may uh, uh, lift off. Uh, and so we got the guy over here, we've gotten this side tacked on, and now we're going to get that side tacked on. And again, a little bit of solder flux, 
Again, you can never have too clean a tip, so you want to take advantage of the solder that has the resin core in it that will help to remove the oxide, melt the solder on the tip, clean it off with the brass sponge. Now we're ready to go, and this is the guy that we want to add a little bit of solder. And again, what all we're doing is touching the molten solder to the pad. The flux is doing all the work for us. It's um, reflowing the solder to the device component and the pad. And we'll do the same thing. Oops. So all we're doing is uh, reflowing the solder to the pad. The flux is doing all the work for us. And here's our part that is soldered to the board. Unfortunately, because of the effectively thermal damage that we do to the pads, you can't um, remove a part and put a part down more than a few times without um, heating up the pads enough to damage the adhesion and risking the possibility of pulling off the pads. So you want to be very careful uh, not to run into that situation. And so that's all it takes um, in order to add a part to the board, uh, remove it, heating it up uh, to melt both sides at the same time, removing it, cleaning up the pad, making sure there's enough solder on the pad remaining to tack the part down on one side, and then uh, soldering the other side, doing a good joint there, going back and adding a little solder to the joint that was tacked. And that's how you can literally walk up and down the board uh, and, attach, and attach the 1206 parts.